Hey everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to my channel. Today's episode is all about this chili sauce. I bet you thought I forgot about this. Oh no, we're using this. Now this is the type of bag that I would get when I would be working in like Applebee's or Ruby Tuesday. This is what a lot of their sauces come in. So I am no stranger to sauces like this, thanks to my work experience. And tonight's the first night we're gonna crack this open and we're gonna be making street tacos. If you're new here, I'm Carolina. I do a lot of food bank hauls, pantry cooking, and a little bit of homesteading. If that's the kind of content you're into, I hope you'd consider subscribing. We would love to have you a part of the family. All right, so let's crack this open. I'll get you in close and kind of show you what I got going on. All right, so I have some fresh chorizo I'm gonna cook up, and then I have a little bit of this hamburger left over that I'm going to heat that up, and then I'm gonna combine them is kind of my plan. I got some cheddar cheese here. Costco is the cheapest place I have found to buy cheese. Where do you guys get your cheese? Because anywhere else to me is just crazy expensive. I also never buy shredded or sliced cheese. I always get the block and do it myself. Save yourself a little bit of money. I got some of these tortillas we're using up. Um, I got some of these as well I need to use, so I'm gonna use that as well. I got some spinach we're gonna put on top. And then some homemade peach salsa. If you haven't seen the video for when I make this peach salsa, I will link it below. It is so good. And of course, we're gonna top it off with some chili sauce. So first thing I'm gonna do is get my pan heated up. And I'm gonna put this chorizo on there. Now a lot of people have said they've never used chorizo before. Like it's literally just pork, vinegar, paprika, and salt. Salt, spices, garlic. It's not really that spicy. I don't think it's that spicy anyway, in my opinion. Like that red is just the paprika. It's, I know it looks intimidating, but, and it's really good guys. It adds a lot of flavor. Oh, look at that, broken up a little bit. The pan will start heating up, it'll start cooking. While we're waiting for that, let's grate this cheese. I got my handy dandy grater here. I'm gonna go ahead and just grate this whole block so it'll be grated in the fridge, ready to go. I got it out. I'm dirtying up my grater. Might as well just get the whole thing done and over with. It should fit in this container. All right, guys, this is the last of the cheese here. It's a bit of an arm workout, but it's worth getting it all done at one time. Perfect. All right, well that is cooking. I'm going to open up this bag. I have a half gallon here and a pint. I'm hoping that'll be enough to fit it all in. This is a, um, it's a bag scraper. Like up here it has a blade where it cuts it and then you put the bag in between here and it squeezes all the sauce out. This is one thing I was forced to use at Applebee's all the time to get all the products out and it just kind of stuck with me. So you cut it all the way across. And we'll see if it fits in here. Oh. It is going to fit. Well, that was a nice surprise. And then, and then you're just going to take this and you get all that extra sauce out. Well, I guess one of these bags is exactly half a gallon. Just look at that. Alright, and let's see. How much of this we can use, guys? Oh, some spilt. What a shame. First time to give it a try. Woo! It is spicy. 
That is not going to be for children. <laughs> so me and my husband are going to have to tackle that. Yeah. So we're not going to put any of that sauce on the kids, but husband and I will take it. And that's really good. It's like creamy, but it's got that smoky, spicy in the back, and then you get that zing of vinegar in there. It's a really good flavored sauce, so I'm excited to see how I can use this. <laughs> All right, back to our chorizo. It's looking good. Now, if you notice, the fresh chorizo is different than the chorizo that you get that's like in a tube. That one's more like, um, I would say a paste somehow, and then this is like ground beef, you know, like chunks of meat actually in chorizo. So it's interesting, the different types. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in all of our beef. If you missed the video where I prepped all of this ground beef in advance, then I can link that below as well. All right guys, our meat is done. I tasted it, it tastes fantastic. So I got this pan heating up. I'm gonna heat up some of these tortillas. These ones are older, so I'm gonna use these first. One rule we always learned in the kitchen, it's called FIFO, first in, first out. So whatever's the oldest is what you need to be using up first. So if like you have a can of pumpkin open, and then you need a recipe that calls for a whole can and pumpkin. You don't open up a new can. You use the last of your old can and then open the new can, you know, if that makes sense. All right, let's check around here. I'm going to open up the spinach and use it as lettuce today. Then I'm going to put the warm tortilla under a towel. My Aunt Jan made me these towels when my twins were born. Jan, if you're watching, we still use them and we love them. to assemble these for the kiddos. Thanks for watching Rambo with me. That was nice, baby. What? Watching Rambo together. All right, and that's what the kids are having for dinner. No sides tonight, we're just gonna do tacos. Easy peasy on mom, they'll live. All right, and then this is what's for dinner for husband. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's check out the next recipe. Hey everybody. For tonight's dinner, I still have quite a bit of this chili lime sauce left, uh, approximately six cups worth. So you've already seen a little bit of what I've done with this. I also gave some to a friend, a pickle jars worth. I have some sweet pickled onions that I still have left from my subscriber featured recipe. I can link that below if you'd like to go check out how I made these. So instead of making caramelized onions, I'm going to saute these ones up and see how they taste. We tasted them just like this and they are so good. They're definitely sweet guys, like these are really good. It's actually more of a relish than a sweet pickle. So you can put this on burgers, hot dogs, put them in meatloaf, anything like that. So I'm going to be heating it up and seeing how it handles being heated up to put on our patty mount. We're gonna be using this as our sauce instead of a normal Thousand Island. I do have some Thousand Island or mayonnaise I'm gonna put for the kids because, you know, they wimps. And then I have, you know, in your bread drawer where for some reason there's three things of bread open and it's all the ends, like, why? So we're gonna be using up this bread. And then I do have a pack of rolls here that I'm thinking I'm gonna make little sliders for the kids. We'll see how it goes, you know. We'll see, they haven't seen it yet, so I'm not gonna disappoint if I don't make that. So let me get you in close and uh, we'll get this party started. Oh, I also have some old, once hot, well, I have some once frozen, then hot, then refrozen fries in here. These are kind of like um, little twist ones here. They look pretty good that you would get at a deli. Uh, so I'm going to throw this in the air fryer and I'm going to get these cooking while I have everything else going so I can save myself from heating up my oven. For my burgers, I got three pounds of ground beef here. This is what I'm going to mix up and form my patties. And to this meat mixture, I'm going to use the last of my garlic salt. Finally, it's gone. 
no more. From now on, garlic powder. I was not a fan. All right, and then I'm gonna do ground pepper, some more regular salt, some Worcestershire sauce. Love that stuff. And then some more of my leek powder. It's kind of like an onion powder if you've never heard of leeks. I can show you that I've made this in my potato leek soup canning video. I can link it below if you're interested in learning about that. All right, and there's no other way. Just get your hands in there. Oh, well, I should have took my ring off. Oh, well. Too late now. It's seen worse. kind of stuff do you guys like to put into your hamburger patties when you make them? Like I just looked up a regular patty recipe and it didn't call for breadcrumbs or eggs. What do you guys think? Should I put that in? All right. Well, we'll do this for now and then I'm going to get my skillets, well, hands washed and then skillets heated up. The first thing I'm going to do is drain these onions. So we're just trying to see if we can get these crisp up at all. I don't know if you can use bacon grease to toast up some bread. I don't see why not. So I'm gonna give it a try. I usually use butter, but I got this bacon grease so I'm gonna use up. Get my container back. Toast that up. For the air fryer, I got it set. Air fry, 390, put it in. I don't know what time. Whoa, not 20 minutes. I don't know. I haven't mastered an air fryer yet. My friend just gave me this. Let's do seven minutes. See how that looks. I'm going to butter, or I'm going to grease up one more. I think I'm gonna use this bread. It's too flimsy. I do have some good sourdough though, so I'm gonna use that. I might cut it in half. No, oh, that was only too bad. All right, let's get these onions off. This looks pretty good to me. Leave it again a little star. Take a quick paper towel, put that up. Keep toasting this bread. All right, look, we got all that bread used up, and I got this bacon grease out of my fridge. That feels good. those in there for now haven't even started my burgers yet oh no oh uh, here's the crunch um, um it's a crunchy okay all right now let's do the burgers all right so i'm gonna grab some of my meat mixture here Kind of go for a square shape. It's cool to be square. And then I might do a little ones over here for the sliders. So I'm just kind of pressing and shaping. 
to get the shape I want. Another trick is to have wet hands and then do it and it keeps the grease from building up on your hands. If it starts to get a lot of grease on your hand. While those are cooking, I'm just gonna patty up a couple extra so I can have my hands dirty once and that's it. One thing I like to do that I picked up in the restaurant is that you always re-salt your meat as it's cooking because as it cooks, the juices flow and it pushes that seasoning out. So one of the reasons why restaurant food has so much more flavor than when you cook it at home is because they add more seasoning. They usually have more fat in there too. <laughs> All right, so let's see if we can flip this one. Oh yeah, that looks good. Let's check this one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. For these buns here, what I'm going to, these are actually dinner rolls, but we're going to use them as slider buns. So I'm going to take a serrated knife. The serrated knife works way better for cutting bread than a flat bread, Ugh, than a flat knife does. I'm going to kind of try and keep it together. Keep it together, man! Let's see how I did. Not too bad. I should have toasted these before I did my meat. I'm just gonna throw these. It's okay. I'm just gonna throw these in the toaster oven. kind of push on them gently you don't want to smash them down because that's literally pushing all of the juice and the moisture out of them but you can like push on them and like you can see how this is still jiggly but you see that this is firm can you tell the difference so these like this one's still a little jiggly so these are going to cook a little more i might flip them over again yep and these two though these two little ones are done this one's almost done So I'm gonna put a little bit of onion on ours. I might do a couple on the kids. You know, you never know if they're gonna like it. All they can do, all they'll do is, ew, I don't like it, and they'll take them off, you know? Or they'll be like, oh, mom, this is so good, and you never know. So the cheese for the littles, I'm gonna kind of fold it in half. So like half a slice of cheese. All right, guys, I made this for you, but my camera got too hot and shut off on me, and I didn't realize. So all I did was put the chili sauce on top of the burgers there, and we're going to serve it with fries. And then for the kids, I have my toasted bun, and I just did some mayonnaise and some fries. And then I'll split this up between the three. And that's what's for dinner. All right, take a bite. Thumbs up. All right, mom got a thumbs up. Yay! Guys, this looks so good. I wish I had some mushrooms. I don't know if mushrooms originally go on patty melts, but I love mushrooms. But I'm gonna give this a try. Oh, you gotta find the perfect bite. Because you're too short. Oh my gosh, guys, that's so good. All right, let's see what else I can do with this chili sauce because I didn't make much of a dent. For my next use of this chili lime sauce, I still have about five cups of it left. I'm gonna be making a pasta salad. So what I'm planning on doing is bow tie pasta. I got some peppered bacon here. I'm gonna open a can of sweet peas a yellow bell pepper, and some cheddar cheese. And we're gonna get that mixed up and see how that tastes. Well, I got my peas draining, so I'm going to cut up this bell pepper. So 
forget to save your pepper ends for your stock bag. Looks like I'm going to be needing to make some stock here soon. I just have a Target bag I keep in my freezer full of all my scraps. Gonna be making these bite size. As we got our pepper in there, let's put our peppered bacon in there. Let's put our cheese. All right, I'm gonna pour some of the sauce on there. Let's see if I grab a big enough bowl. I didn't get a big enough bowl. Maybe if someone did some dishes around here, I'd have a bigger bowl. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to throw in some of the canned peas. Um, I'm just going to put in all of it. Because I'm not struggling enough to mix it, right? Just add the whole thing. All right. I would normally use frozen peas, but I am out of frozen peas, and I have canned peas, so that's what we're using. I really liked canned peas, though. I don't know. I can eat them straight out of the can. I think this looks pretty good, guys. What do you think? This would be something fun to take to a potluck. Some of the different twists, like a spicy pasta salad. Mm -hmm. Give her a try. Oh my gosh, that's good. I'd eat that. In fact, I'm probably gonna eat most of this. Man, that's good. I'm gonna try a little bit with the sweet pepper. I didn't get a sweet pepper in there. It's good with that bell pepper. It adds like a, a crunch, but not like a chewy crunch from the bacon, but a crisp crunch. And it's refreshing against the spiciness of the sauce. Man, look at that. You know, don't be afraid to get creative, guys. Even if you're like, I don't know if it's gonna taste good or not. Give it a try, you never know. This tastes fantastic. Well, I got four cups left. What else can I make with this? Um. All right, guys, so I have a little more of this chili lime sauce I'm trying to use up. And my idea is I'm going to open up this can of beef and strain it and then add some of my homemade rhubarb barbecue sauce to it. And then I'm going to strain off my pickled coleslaw I have made and add some of the chipotle lime to the coleslaw and kind of make like a spicy beef, barbecue beef coleslaw sandwich. So that's my plan. I got these yummy potato buns that I'm going to be toasting up. So let's get started. How many of you guys get this can of beef at your food banks or food pantries? This is where I got that from. It seems like they're always passing these out and always looking for ways to use it. If you've 
Never seen it before. Yep, appetizing, uh-huh. It's not so bad once you heat it up though. Now I'm going to save this broth. Let's see. It's pretty much gel, you see that? It's cold gel. Putting this in my pan. Now this is also good if you just heat this up with the juice. You can add like a little cornstarch to it and it would make a nice gravy for it. I'm gonna try and use as little of the juice as possible though since I have a barbecue sauce. Okay, and then you can see like the fat, and this looks just like if you were to home can your own beef, you know. So, don't be grossed out, guys. I know a lot of you are going to be like, ew, but, you know, it's food, and it can taste good. You just got to know how to do it. All right, so let's get this heating up. Yeah, while that's heating up, I'm going to drain off this brine from my pickled coleslaw. Oh, gosh. Oh my gosh, I can't pop this seal. Well, that's how you know you got a good seal. Oh. Husband, I can't do it. Right, here's what our coleslaw looks like once it's all strained. This is really good, guys. I'm planning on making this and doing a video on it. This is shredded cabbage. There's some kurabi in there. There's carrots, there's peppers. It's really good. You could eat it just like this, like as a kind of a vinegary one. Mm. Or add mayonnaise to it, which I'm going to add the chipotle lime to make it spicy. Oh, that's good. Give it a try. Mm-mm. Yep, that's good. All right, we're just kind of mashing this up. And then you can see there's some juices and stuff down here, so we're just going to keep letting this cook, cook off some of that juice, and then we'll add our barbecue sauce to it. I'm going to butter our breads and get these in the broiler. Now obviously guys, this is just for me and my husband for dinner. I'm not going to be cooking this for the kids because of that spicy coleslaw. So they got a different dinner tonight, which is okay to do. Sometimes I don't want to always tone stuff down for me and them, you know, I want something that I want to eat, so I will make two separate meals. Make them something easy and make something that I feel like cooking and I want to eat for me. Okay, so into the broiler. I'm gonna toss a little bit of bacon grease in with this beef. Just to see if I can add some flavor, add some fat to it. it looks like a lot of that liquid is getting cooked out is good. Our barbecue sauce. If you haven't seen the video where I made this, I can link that below. Make sure it's still good. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so good. There's brown sugar in that. That really makes all that difference. Brown sugar. All right, so you can see all that water's gone. There's a little bit left right here, but most of that's gone. So we're starting to get some cook on our meat. Okay, so I'm gonna add some of the sauce. Thank you. 
then try a little taste. Wow, that tastes great. I know it <laughs> looks like a big pile of a, uh, um, yeah, but it tastes great. All right, so I'm gonna call that done. Let's check our buns. I have my buns. Woo. See what I was talking about? That broiler can get away from you. That's okay. That'll be husband's. He'll be fine. I think this needs cheese on it, guys. I don't know. That's pretty good. As is. So one can, I probably have enough here for probably two more sandwiches, and that's pretty generous with that. And our spicy coleslaw. Serving this with some of our homemade pickles. I'm just waiting on the tater tots, and that's what's for dinner. Hey everybody, so I had a crazy idea that at least the husband thinks I'm crazy, but you know, I've been watching his kids all day, so maybe I have done gone crazy. But I have this chili lime sauce left over and it's four cups worth to be precise. And I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. And I've been a little creative with dinner, but I'm like, you know, can I make a dessert with it? Chipotle lime, I don't know, but it is mayonnaise based. So I'm thinking, what can you substitute mayonnaise for? And sometimes in cakes, you can use mayonnaise instead of oil because mayonnaise is literally oil and eggs mixed together. I have this Pillsbury dark chocolate cake mix that is best by July 2021. Oh, oh my gosh, it's expired. How can she eat expired food? Seriously guys, it's a best by date. It's totally fine to use food past the best by date. Like use your sense, you know, smell it, taste it, stuff like that to make sure it's good. But they just have to put an expiration date on there. There's expiration dates on water and you know water doesn't expire. So just keep that in mind when you have something expired like Anyway, so I was thinking like chocolate chipotle kind of Mexican cake, right? I don't know, it might taste good. Husband thinks it's gonna taste gross. I think I can make it taste good, so uh, let's make some dessert. <laughs> I'm thinking for the sauce, since it's mayonnaise based, I'm going to do half a cup of it and then only do two eggs, and then I'll add water to kind of see what the texture looks like. So that's what my plan of attack is. All right, so let's measure half a cup for chipotle lime chili sauce. I don't know, am I crazy guys? You can tell me I'm crazy, it's all right. Sometimes crazy is just good though. All right, and then two eggs. up a little bit. Alright, I'm gonna add like half a cup of water. would do this in my mixer but it's dirty at the moment <laughs> all right I can definitely already tell this is gonna need more water I'm just gonna add all of it in there Consistency looks pretty good. All 
right guys, I'm gonna try the batter. We're gonna see what it tastes like. Wow, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay, so you can taste the, definitely taste the chili lime sauce in there. But then you get hit with that chocolate, it just kind of like, oh. Okay, let's get it in the pan. I'm excited now. Husband, you want to try the batter? No. Why not? Why not? You have no faith in me. All right, I'm going to put this in at 350 and I'm going to set a 20 minute timer and check it from there. All right, our cake just came out. I had put it in for 10 more minutes, so it was in for 30 minutes. And it, it's got a nice rise to it. It looks good. It's got a little dip right in here, but other than that, it looks like a perfect cake. So what I like to do with my cakes is I like to put them in my freezer as soon as they come out of the oven. So this is gonna go in the freezer for 25 minutes. So what that does is it helps freeze the steam that's in the cake and that's holds in all that moisture so it makes for a super moist cake so in the freezer all right so our cake is out of the freezer it looks great i have a couple of different options for icing i have a thing of frozen cream cheese icing that i had extra when i made my banana cake so i could use that or i have this store-bought chocolate icing that i've had in my fridge for a while that i need to use so I think what I'm gonna do is microwave this and get it runny and drizzle it over it and make it chocolatey. So let's get this used up and out of the fridge. All right, it was all melted. All I did was slowly heat this up, you know, 15 seconds at a time till it was horrible. Get all that out. Just spread it all the way to the edges here. gonna let this sit for a couple minutes and then we'll give her a slice all right it hasn't been sitting that long but I'm impatient I'm ready to give it a try Let's give our chili lime cake a try. So you can definitely taste the chili lime sauce. I mean, it's not terrible. I don't know if I would make it again but it's definitely edible wow definitely not close to a mexican chocolate cake like i was thinking but it's not terrible guys that was good come take a bite all right let's give it a taste all right let's see you can be honest <laughs> it's not bad yeah. It tastes like a chocolate cake. It's a little bit of spice, the spice to it. If you didn't know it was chili lime sauce, could you tell? It's actually chipotle. No. It's like chipotle, so. Yeah, I couldn't tell that's what it is, but it's, you can taste the flavor. Yeah? 
Interesting. We got an interesting. <laughs> See guys, this is why it's fun to try new stuff. You really never know what might taste good. Mm. Well guys, that's everything I made out of that chili lime sauce. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit me up in the comments below of what you would have made with it. And if you guys ever get something from the food bank that you don't know what to do with it, you've never heard of it, you just have no idea, or you have an abundance of it and you don't know what to make, I have a Facebook group. I will link it below. Come join our Facebook group post whatever it is that you don't know what to do with, and we will all jump in and help out the best we can. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time on Mama Bairds.